why should you invest in the South African market in 2021? Our financial institutions actually give us the liberty to be paying them back either 20 years or at sometimes it does even get to 30 years. So now if the interest rate is actually going to be pushed up and now your cash flow is going to be pushed out and you are not able to actually increase the rents to a point whereby it's going to actually give you the positive cash flow then that becomes a problem you need to then sell your property as soon as possible however in some countries interest rates can actually get to 20 percent hey there hello everybody you are tuned into normal my name is now and my name is Lebu. today i'm really excited about what we're actually going to be speaking about we are speaking that why should you yes you invest in the south african market in 2021 i mean this topic comes from us engaging with property investors and people not only from south africa however also outside south africa that has broadened our perspective to actually acknowledge so many things about the south african property market man. okay so now the first thing that i actually wanted to highlight is that someone actually came to us and was like is it possible for multiple people to own one property and i was like what do you mean and this person is like exactly what i'm saying is it possible for someone or a lot of people to be owning one property and i was like no that's not possible only one person can own the property right as long as you are actually registered within that property so now this person went on to explain that in their country the admin isn't really good especially with the property market whereby you find out that you could be buying a property that's owned by a totally different person so say for instance now owns a property and he owns it together with you and I'm actually going to buy the property from now only to find out that I need to deal with someone else that also owns this particular property. So now in South Africa, that never happens. What happens most of the time is that if I'm owning the property or if I own the property together with Neo, we are registered together at the deeds office yeah. whereby both of us are actually owning this particular property. However, it would not happen that two different people from different places that don't even know each other own the same property. I was about to put clarity on that, that it might happen whereby it's two people in a joint venture mm -hmm. or three or four, depending on how many people that came through with it. However, now with what you're putting on the table is that this does cause a lot of, a lot of conflict. Imagine selling a property only to find out that 10 people bought the same property. Now, it will be conflict in terms of who is going to occupy the property itself. So... Big ups to the South African conveyancer and also the South African law in terms of that, that it protects the property market in terms of it being an open market system and people can actually enjoy the freedom when it comes to registration that I can register and I can also be the owner. However, we do also mention on the other side that it does happen sometimes whereby the person who's not the rightful owner selling the property. However, now with that, you might also want to make sure that you always get your conveyances to read and actually make sure that you are dealing with an estate agent company that has actually did their due diligence in terms of making sure that whoever who is selling the property is the rightful owner. Sure. Now, here us up with the second point that you'd actually want to highlight. The second one is that our financial institutions actually give us the liberty to be paying them back either 20 years or at sometimes it does even get to 30 years. So what that means is that I can actually be paying money back to the financial institution in a manner whereby I can still be benefiting through cash flow. Sure. So, I mean, in other countries, you actually be shocked that you only have something like five to seven years to pay the bank back. So what that does is that it brings that whole amount closer. And when I'm saying that it brings it closer, that means you pay more. So in some countries, you actually get to a situation whereby you are a property investor however you're not seeing the fruits right now so at least in south africa it does actually offer the opportunity to that i remember also having a conversation with this other international investor and he was like that's the situation in my country we need to finish off the loan in about seven years and whereas in south africa it's 20 to 30 years so if you are in South Africa and you thought that this was a privilege or you didn't actually even take notice of the 20 to 30 years, it's something that you should be taking to consider that it does offer you space to cash flow. Okay, so now with the point that you just raised, right, when I actually heard about it, I was like, 
how does that even make sense? Yeah. How do we actually pay off a house within seven years? I mean, that's going to be a whole lot of down payment that you need to actually do. That's a whole lot of payments that you actually need to do. However, if we can actually stretch our loan period through 20 years, we can then actually get more cash flow from the property that I'm actually having right now. So I think that was a very good point that you actually raised. So the third point that- Before would, we even go to the third point, I mean, cash flow is one of those reasons why we invest in property investing. Because we know that if it's not cash flowing positive, I do not invest. So I can imagine level being in that country whereby it's not cash flowing positive. And it's like, but what's happening right now? What is happening? What are my rules anymore? How do I adapt to this situation? So it's something that we need to actually be proud of that in South African market, you can actually get that 20 or even 30 years. I thought you were about to say cash flow never retires. Cash flow never, never retires. retires. And that wasn't planned. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now when you're looking at the third point that I would actually highlight, right, is that the property market in South Africa is quite beautiful, man. You have beautiful properties. I mean, if you're going from your hotels, if you're going to your apartments, if you're looking at your freestanding houses, we have beautiful houses, beautiful apartments, beautiful hotels that people are actually living in and people actually want to live in these particular places. So now if you are able to actually position yourself in terms of what kind of market are you going into? Do you want to go into the apartment space? Do you want to go into the freestanding space or do you want to go into the hotel spaces? You are able to actually invest in such properties within South Africa. I mean, I haven't even started about looking at the farming space in South I, Africa. I, wanted to go there. I haven't even looked at the industrial side of South Africa. So there's a whole lot of opportunities whereby if you are an international investor and you actually wanted to come into South Africa and start with the farming or industrial or invest in hotels, man, that's a big market to actually look into. I mean, you know, even buying land can be one of those things that is taboo. Like I've just bought land. Whereas in other countries, they don't even have land to buy. Mm. Like they're fully occupied in terms of there's houses already. And the only land that is there, it's land that's far from the city or it's far from everything. So there's still opportunity. I do not know when are we going to get to that point whereby buying land will be something big. However, it's something that we should, should also take into notice. But however, also on the buying land, I'd like to actually open the table that if you are interested in terms of buying land and developing it, let us have a conversation. Or if you're just a in property investor or even an international investor and you're like, gents, let's have a conversation in terms of how can you guys bring value to where I am at right now? Hit the link below, Calendly, and then we'll, we'll be free to actually have a discussion with you. So back on the land issue. If you are buying land, you need to understand the development rules. Mm. So it's not as easy as buying a property and renting it out. You need to understand that because it's quite hard in terms of looking at land because most of the time, let's just say that you're using cash. How will you gauge that? Was this a good investment or not? Because as much as money will be coming in once you're done with the whole project, you also want to look at it from the investment side that at what percentage am I getting my money at? And we'll be more than happy to have a discussion with you. I mean, it goes back to having a power team, right? If you have a coach that has actually invested in property or you have a conveyancer that has actually dealt with property, then you can then start to actually get more information in terms of how do you actually invest within that particular property. So now I have said my two points and I hope that you actually enjoyed it. Nell is about to bless us with the last point. <laughs> <laughs> the last point we are talking about the interest rates. I know when we're speaking, when we're thinking about interest rates, it can be just one of those things whereby interest rates, yes, they're at the all-time lowest. However, in some countries, interest rates can actually get to 20%. That's like crazy when you're thinking about in South Africa, they are at 7%. It's not even half, it's below half. So you'd actually want to take advantage of this, but I'd like to actually put emphasis that as property investors, you do not buy a property just because of interest rate. Mm. Interest rate should be a beneficiary towards the reason. It should be the cherry on top. I hope we're going to do that. Okay. Cherry thing. Okay. Just to... It will be the cherry on top that the reason why are we buying so that it can actually increase the in the cash flow that we're getting. Going back to the point that we spoke about cash flow. So 
interest rates in South Africa, when you compare them to other countries, they are very competitive. So it would be a situation whereby if you are investing in property and you're like, which country has great interest rates, South Africa would be one of those countries that you are looking for. So now looking at that particular interest rate topic, right, mm -hmm. this actually drew me to something that I'd actually want to touch on. So now we always speaking about having an exit strategy and being comfortable with selling the property as soon as possible. So now this is where it goes in. Say for instance, right now, the interest rate is sitting at 7%. With the interest rate sitting at 7%, and now we want to actually go into the market and invest in property. However, five years from now, the interest rates actually go up to 9%. I'm not saying that they are going to go up to 9%. I'm just saying, hypothetically speaking, they move to 9%. And now this messes up with your numbers, your cash flow and everything like that, right? So now how do you then combat that particular problem for you to, ab to be able to progress within your property journey? This would then bring in your exit strategy into play. If you were actually ready to sell this property from day one, Right, it doesn't become a problem when this property is actually cash flowing positive, negative, or when this mm. property is not actually reaching the targeted ROI mm. that you wanted. Mm. So now, if the interest rate is actually going to be pushed up, and now your cash flow is going to be pushed down, and you are not able to actually increase the rents to a point whereby it's going to actually give you the positive cash flow, then that becomes a problem. You need to then sell your property as soon as possible. If you haven't actually budgeted to actually sell that particular problem, property, it then becomes a problem for you. So now make sure that you always have an exit strategy when you are buying this particular property. I enjoyed today's, today's video. As we did mention that our doors are open. They're open for you. Just hit the link below and let us have a conversation about how can we add value to your journey. And I have actually said that we are going to reach 3,000 before the end of the month. I didn't realize how it was, but I had already committed. So now if you have actually watched so far, <laughs> please make sure that you share this content as much as possible. Let's reach that 3,000 before the end of the month. And I mean, for us, this is the conversation that we have with people that are following us and our network is that it's not only about getting that 3,000, however, the quality, mm -hmm. however, what are you really getting out from us? So when we're hosting events, this, this is what we really enjoy the most when people are actually pitching. You know, when you're doing something for the likes and all of that, it's something, however, when people are pitching and saying that, you know what, I'm committing to this course and I understand that you guys are here and you're going to take me there. I'm willing to actually grind the way you guys are always speaking upon that. It's not a walk in a park so as much as we are going to get to the 3000 i'm so happy about the quality that we're getting to get to the 3000 let's cry if you watched so far please put in a pro down on we comments. haven't done this in a while we haven't done this in a while if you haven't actually if you've watched so far pro you know why because somebody will be like what's happening why are you guys saying pro man that's our code man. vest like a pro no signing out cheers